Good morning, everyone. And this is additional, these are the additional talks for the FRCS course. It's very important have you interpret this each stations. This talk is going to focus on common topics and some other extra from the feedback we have included a nasal mass, ear reconstructions and, and possibly Pete syndrome in this talk or in the next talk. Any of you know what it is? Clearly this shows a lesion in the back of the tongue. The differential diagnosis um, you can start the, the differential diagnosis right away, or you would say, I'll take a detailed history and all this examinations and everything. Um, but the examiner pushes you for more diagnosis and, and the discussion. You could go for, this is a lesion in the back of the tongue, could be malignancy, or it could be lingual tonsil. Yeah, so this is very rare topic. Sometimes you do come across uh, uncommon topics, but uh, it's this viva station is like Maratha. So if you failed in once, it doesn't mean you're going to have a bad outcome. So it's very important to keep going uh, and performing the next stations uh, at your maximum capacity. So lingual thyroid, it's, it can present from seven years and 22 years. Remember, it can be asymptomatic or symptomatic with mild symptoms, dysphagia or bleeding. Investigations, you can do thyroid function test. Sometimes CT scan can be useful. Uh, ultrasound is useful. Um, it tells you whether you have uh, thyroid in the normal location uh, or uh, any other neck nodes. If you're convinced that's lingual thyroid, you can do um, iodine scanning, um, but sometimes uh, you worry about, about the side effects. However, it's a very low dose of radioiodine material. Um, I could be discussed with the nuclear medicine. So treatment, most of the times it's asymptomatic or they present with mild symptoms. Please don't jump and say, I will remove it by operation. Yes, you can take a biopsy if you are highly suspicious for a malignancy or if your radiological investigation concerns about malignancy. But apart from that, uh, it could be managed uh, medically or even without any int uh, interventions. Sometimes uh, giving thyroxine suppresses the TSH that reduce the size of the lingual thyroid that will make the uh, symptoms better. Yes, surgical approaches are possible. You could remove it endoscopically by using laser or cold steel. Uh, laser, KTP lasers are preferable because of the vascularity, uh, you could consider harmonic um, scalpels. And there are case reports about removal of these things with the robot or sometimes external approach to the splitting the jaw, but it is rare. Um, there are reports talk about transplanting the thyroid tissue, but I'm not very convinced about these things. If you don't know much about this, if you can't back up your answers, please better not to mention. So differential diagnosis, SCC of the tongue base or other tumors of the tongue base. The next is inverted papilloma. You don't need to jump and say it's inverted papilloma, but that's one of the differential diagnoses for unilateral nasal mass. So that's the symptom. It could be malignancy, or it could be general nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, 
or to be endocrinal polyp. So go with a broad friend and have a system in place. That's the key for the FRCS exam. And also you should know about the basic facts or salient facts about that condition. You don't need to know everything. So invert papilloma is otherwise called the Snuderian papilloma because the epithelium grows into the stoma uh, as opposed to the exophytic. It's R. And usually comes from the lateral nasal wall and could go into the, all the sinuses. So unlike carcinoma, it doesn't breach the mucous membrane, do not infiltrate brain. Unlike inflammatory polyps, it can cause local bone destruction. So in this virus station, they might show the unilateral nasal mass or they might show the scans. The salient features of inverted papilloma is known for recurrence and it can become malignant or it could be associated with malignancy. The publications with 3,000 patients, malignancy rate is 2.1 to 11%. It also high in recurrent cases. Uh, usually it becomes squamous cell cancer, uh, sometimes it can be associated with metachron as malignancy up to 3.6 percent. Incident is 1.5 per 100,000. Any nasal case, the presentations think about nasal, orbital, intracranial, and intraoral or palatal symptoms. The differential diagnosis, as I said earlier, include fungal sinusitis, fibro fibroma. Uh, or dysplasia. This is a CT scan. Um, it's focusing on the skull base level. You can describe whether it is axial or coronal, or you want to see all the images, which clearly shows um, a heterogeneous mass uh, involving the entire nasal cavity and uh, it's pushing the septum medially um, to the other side and, and you may say there may be erosion or may not be erosion. Yep, and that's a variegated appearance and uh, there is a possibility of a skull base um, a defect. It's going to the frontal recess and, and comment about uh, the orbit and there is involvement of lamina papyracea and see whether there's anything related to the orbital muscles. Yep. And also comment about the sinuses. It's it's clear here, but this is this is also uh, pacified. Um, it could be uh, due to the secondary uh, blockage of this mass or it could be in continuity. And that's why sometimes you may need MRI scan. And this particular case, you want to know about the brain involvement and the orbital involvement. So MRI brain and the orbit sometimes very useful. So that's how you describe the scan. CT, always look for bone destruction, remodeling, uh, calcification. And uh, why do you need to do MRI scan? It gives you full extent. I exclude mucus from the other soft tissues, um, or it can also give you involvement of any intracranial or a skull base. So the surgical principle for any unilateral nasal mass, its diagnosis needs to be confirmed before complete resection. So biopsy is recommended for this sort of cases unless it's JNA. Um, during the surgery, endoscopic surgery is preferable um, and the most important point is there may be a, a small focus of malignancy, so try to send all the tissue um, while you are doing the surgery, send for pathology. Endoscopy doesn't give you a scar, it's image guidance, 
um, can be practiced for a safer surgery. It gives you magnified view and angle endoscope has got additional advantage. It's currently endoscopy is the treatment of choice. In some cases, still lateral rhinotomy, medial maxillectomy, and uh, um, other external approaches are useful. Um, some papers claim it causes low recurrence, um, but it causes high morbidity. Bottom line is these patients need long-term follow-ups. So j &E, common findings or features are adolescent males, uh, vascular malformation is the one theory, incomplete regression of the first branchial artery, known for high recurrence. Um, it is a shift-toward endoscopic approach, preoperative embolization, um, and while during the surgery, so drilling the Vidian canal prevents recurrence. Still, radiotherapy considered for rare cases. So the risk of bleeding is high. It comes from the posterior superior spinopalatine foramen. So it can uh, go into the brain. So look for intracranial and extracranial. I especially can involve sinuses, um, nasopharynx, oropharynx, or it can go into the infratemporal fossa through the spinopalatine area. It can involve the orbit and also the maxillary sinus. It can present with the bleeding history or nasal mass or proptosis. This is a, a picture of nasopharyngeal angiofibroma involving the spinopalatine area. It's, it's endoscopic picture. It's in the area of the coena. Possibly the coena is fully blocked and the mass is going to the nasopharynx and oropharynx. Possibly the children may have the eustachian tube dysfunction as well. So this is uh, a CT and MRI picture clearly shows to the axial section around the level of the orbit. This clearly shows as a dumbbell shaped uh, tumor arising the spinopalatine foramen with a widening of the, uh, um, it's, it's called Hallman Muller sign and uh, involving the infratemporal fossa, nasal cavity, posterior mm, uh, part of the nose and also the nasal pharynx. This is contrast enhancement, and in, in this is uh, nasopharynx. Um, so better not to do biopsy. Um, CT scan is useful, and this is a um, staging system, uh, Radaski. Uh, it's based on the extension, and also he designs the staging whether this is suitable for endoscopic removal or not. So stage one is if the tumor limited to the nasopharynx, stage two in the pterygomaxillary fossa extension, stage three gone into the intracranial. So intracranial extensions may need external approach. One and two could be managed endoscopically. Remember to pre-op embolization, blood grouping, cross-matching. So treatment, Endoscopic or external, the external includes ralto-rhinotomy, mid-facial degloving, maxillary sphing. Similar sinonasal malignancy presenting symptoms, nasal, orbital, palatal, intracranial. Occupation is important uh, for these uh, cases because of that in a carcinoma involves um, uh, woodworking industry people. And the examination involves same in, in the case, uh, in the clinical examination as well, examination of nose inside on the dorsum, there's a widening, sometimes maybe scar, lateral rhinotomy scars, examination of the oral cavity, especially the palate and, and the teeth. Orbital examination includes proptosis or a scars or limitation of the movement of the eyes um, or pupillary reflexes. Uh, don't forget to examine the neck. Sometimes um, they may present with the neck nodes, might have had a neck dissection. Investigations, nasal endoscopy, CT and MRI, both are complementary. Um, especially MRI is useful for intracranial extensions, including cavernous sinus, 
Um, and uh, management includes head and neck and skull base and BT discussions. It's very important. Um, and tumor staging workup uh, starts with a biopsy, uh, then uh, discussion. This case is very different from inverted papilloma. Clearly involves uh, the orbit, the nasal cavity with erosion and erosion of the palate, intraoral lesion, and extensing to the infratemporal fossa. Uh, this scans goes intracranial extension. So it's involving the, all the muscles on the orbit. So serenacial malignancy could be benign or malignant. If it is malignant, if it is epithelial, it's a squamous cell carcinoma or other type, or non-epithelial, could be lymphoma. Don't forget, they could be treated by radiotherapy or chemotherapy as well. So the biopsy is key. And treatment. Talk about uh, oncology terms like single modality or multiple modality treatment or whether it's considered palliative treatment. So previous case could be treated uh, palliatively. Surgical approach, it's open approach or endoscopic or combined. The discussion should be the extent of resection, whether you're going to preserve the orbit or not. Is there any remaining vision uh, how much intracranial extension and how we are going to resect and reconstruct, okay? And whether the need for post-op adjuvant treatment for these patients. So what are the going, how much influence uh, on the day-to-day -day activities for the patients? So rehabilitation is important because most of these cases, surgical approach in, involves 